Good morning, YouTube. How about we do a little throwback Thursday? <laughs> I'm gonna give you something that nobody really has talked about much in the past 50 years, but something that used to be something my mother and grandmother thought was a great thing. I'm gonna show you all how to make chicken consomme. It's also called double chicken stock. It is absolutely delicious, and the cool thing is, it's just a little bit of patience. That's it. You're gonna love this one. All right, let's cook, y'all. We got a family to feed. All right, we're gonna go ahead and make consomme. I love this stuff. I've been making this stuff since I was little. My grandmother taught me how to make it. Um, and I will go down know, two or three years and not make it, and then I'll pull it out and make a ton of it. Um, all right, so this is our batch of awesome chicken broth that we made yesterday. And this is one more, about a four pound chicken. I've pulled most of the skin off, not 100%, but most. And I've got him in our stock pot. And we're taking the skin and the extra bits of fat. And remember, coming up, I'm gonna show you how to do something wonderful. So we're sticking this in the fridge. Nope, no we're not, put it in the freezer. <laughs> All right, so to make our consomme, we're going to duplicate most of the vegetables we did with our regular chicken broth, okay? So don't forget, not only are you saving the skin and the fat, here you are saving your vegetable trimmings. So scrub your vegetables well, and then after you get them trimmed up, you're putting the extras right in there, okay? Get rid of that. All right, so we have two small stalks of celery today. Taste your broth. I tasted the batch we made yesterday, and it turned out tasted a little heavy on the celery, so I'm going light on the celery this time. And our big fat onion. And we're tossing it all in the same pot. Our carrots. I did not peel the carrots this time. I gave them a good scrub in my scrap bag. I'm getting kind of carrot heavy, so I'm going light now that we're at this point. And a bay leaf. Two teaspoons of black peppercorns. I am not adding salt at this stage because when you taste this broth that we made yesterday, it's perfectly seasoned, right? So we need to be super careful with salt going forward. We don't want to get it too salty. Now, if you have fresh garlic, and I hope you use a lot of it, and you get down to the middle of the head of garlic, and you have these really strange shaped bits, right, that are almost too little to use and would be almost impossible to peel, that still has some value, right? And this is the perfect place to use it. So we're going to throw that. <laughs> Try to throw it in our stock pot. So we're just taking these weird little bits and pieces. If you don't have little bitty weird ones, just use two to three large heads of garlic. Those are going in the stock pot just like they are. Okay. Let's get cleaned up and move over. I like working, if I have raw chicken, I like working on a cutting board so I can get rid of the contaminated surface. All right, so here's what we look like now. And most of the deal with the use of homemade stock and broth is patience. So we are adding broth to our pot. I am out of fresh thyme, but that's okay because you can really taste the thyme coming through here. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. You wanna make sure that your ingredients are covered, but you do not wanna dilute your flavors any more than is absolutely necessary. So I need just a little bit of water to come just to cover the top of that chicken right there. I hope it doesn't take too much because that underlying broth is so amazing. And what we're gonna be doing from here on is intensifying those flavors, making them deeper and richer and heartier. We're also drawing more collagen, more gelatin out of there. All right, so about a cup and a half. Hi, Blaine. Hold on. Oh, thank you. You know, Baby was sitting here. He was flipping out because 
This is Bladen. Bladen was working in my front, front flower bed, which is right on the other side of that window. And his cat was staring out the window because he wanted Bladen to come back inside. All right, so here is our pot. All right, same principle applies with regular chicken broth, okay? We're gonna keep it super low. We're gonna barely apply just enough heat to let it come up to the smallest simmer you can imagine. And then we're gonna let it just go, and go, and go, and go. Hours is fine. After about four hours, if it is super, super low, you can pull the meat off the chicken and then put the bones back in there and keep going. That's what we did with the first batch. That's what we'll probably do now. So, two o'clock. So about six o'clock tonight, we'll be ready to strip it out and go to the next step. All right, real quick. It's not quite six, but it's almost six. This has been going, it's perfect. It's exactly what we want. We have the tiniest hints of movement and it's just kind of sitting and steeping. You almost want to think about this more like steeping tea instead of boiling chicken, right? All right, so what I'm gonna do tonight is let this go until about I don't know, eight o'clock. Then I'm gonna throw it in the refrigerator. In the morning, we'll come back and we'll take the next steps. But for now, it's time for something else. All right, so we pulled all the meat off the bones and we're gonna stash this in the fridge. We can do uh, chicken salad, we can make chicken pot pie. I think that's what I'm gonna do. And then over here, the bones just went right back in the pot and this is gonna to continue to simmer, okay? Now, don't let it boil hard. You don't want this fat coming to the surface to emulsify into the broth, right? We wanna keep it nice and clean tasting. Now, one thing. If you're gonna serve your broth by itself as a soup or as a consomme, which, you know, granted, nobody's really done that since the 60s, but if you're gonna do that, I wouldn't mind going ahead and leaving the meat on the bones and continuing to, to do it that way. I did, uh, my dad went through a period of time, he had some poor health and was on a liquid diet, and I made this for him over and over and over again for two months. <laughs> and I would leave, most of the time I would leave the chicken on the bone, I wanted as much uh, nutrition and protein in the broth as possible, but in this case, we're not doing it for that reason, so we're gonna pull it off and use this for something else. Good morning. All right, so I threw it in the fridge last night, pulled it out a few minutes ago, and I'm just gently bringing it up to temperature. Um, I got lazy last night and I just went to bed. So now I'm gonna pull this out and pull all the meat out, um, pull it off the bones, and then I'm gonna throw the bones right back in there and we're gonna keep going. All right, y'all, we have simmered this until there is nothing left for it to give up, right? This has gone, let's see, it was about four and a half hours last night. Another six hours today after I pulled all the meat off the bones. And so now we're ready to strain it. Now you can use a coffee filter. It's not the most efficient, but it works kind of. Um, you can use cheesecloth or do what I do. Which I buy these in bulk, these white little towels. They are relatively lint free. So you're not, you're effectively getting what cheesecloth will give you. But this stuff is, uh, these cloths are more durable. You can bleach them and clean them. And so this is all we're doing now. We're straining the broth. Then we're gonna chill it. And I actually want you to see what it looks like once it's chilled. Uh, we will be able to, there's not a ton of fat, but what fat there is, we will be able to just lift off the top. But I really want you to see what happens when this stuff is chilled. We are going to be able to eat this with a fork, which I know is kind of crazy, but that's kind of what we're after, right? Oh, I'm looking here, here. <laughs> All right, so this is it. All I'm doing, you can see just a tiny fine line. That's the fat that's rising to the top. And the rest of this, this dark, rich broth, normally you only get that color if you're using um, roasted ingredients, if you develop and, and darken the flavors. In this case, we've gotten that color with patience. And y'all, that color equals flavor. This stuff is stupendous. Okay, I will come back and show you what we look like probably tomorrow, because we're going to the lake house. Uh, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's nice and cold and can't wait for you to see that texture. You're gonna wanna make this. <laughs> 
Okie dokie, our double chicken stock, our consomme has thoroughly chilled, and can y'all see this line? We do have a line of fat up at the top. I think the sun is too bright behind us. Let's see. Just like that. All right, and just like when you're making regular chicken broth, we're gonna lift that fat off of there just with a spoon. So here's how that looks. <clears throat> and we didn't have a whole lot of fat going into this process. But what little there is, is now all right up on top. All right, so traditionally, the consomme would be served with you know, little garnishes. A lot of times it's uh, very thinly sliced radishes. Like that French breakfast radish or a butter radish. Levi is very carefully sneaking behind me making tacos. <laughs> so if you hear very furtive, quiet movement, it's the production of tacos. Tonight is Viking night at our house. Viking night is when we've gotten to the point where we've got several days of leftovers. No real meal plan. And it means kids are on their own. Everybody is scrapping for what they can get, just like Vikings. Levi is the first in the kitchen, and he has laid claim to the tacos. <laughs> He's looking at me like I'm crazy. All right, so now I told you all earlier that you would be able to eat chicken broth with a fork, right? Well, this is what I mean. See how gelatinous that is? That is the collagen, the gelatin, the connective tissues. All of that is rendered out of two chickens, right? Now, if you want to, what they used to do in the 70s, you can warm this until it's liquid, pour it into little ramekins, little decorative ramekins. Do I have one close? Uh, no, I don't have one. Hang on, wait. Watch that, watch that jiggle for a second. What? I'm going to tighten my ramekin. What See how it's jiggling? Okay, so this is what I mean by a ramekin, a small like four to eight ounce dish. So you pour it in there and then you chill these and then you unmold it just like you would a jello mold. So you would just run a knife around the outer side to break the suction and pop. And they're actually kind of cool because you have these little jewel like dishes to serve and you'd garnish it with like a little, uh, little bit of chives or some fresh tarragon or uh, like I said, the thin sliced radishes. Okay, so you could do that or and when I said eat it with a fork, that's what I meant. Well, I dropped it. Mmm. <laughs> okay, guys. That. Get this. Okay, there we go. This you can see better. You can't eat it with a fork, but that's kind of silly. All right, so that. Can you see it? You can see straight through it. It's absolutely beautiful and it is incredibly nutrient dense, so loaded with protein. And I gotta say, absolutely delicious. I want a picture of that. I want y'all to see what's on that spoon. Levi, I have trouble with focusing. My <laughs> camera never wants to focus. And now I'm dropping it right onto the counter. Okay, so did we ever get a look at that? Man, that tastes good. Mm. You want to impress somebody with chicken broth or you just want some of the best stuff in the world to use, that's what you need to make right there. Oh, oh and the best chicken, thing. Chicken jello. It is chicken jello. Yes, that shows you. Listen, if everybody, anybody ever serves you chicken jello, you say thank you because it shows that they made it from scratch. It's homemade. Here's the other thing though. You can also put this into the freezer. Freeze it in ice cube trays. You can pop it out as you need it. And because it is so rich and so concentrated, if for some reason you wanted to dilute it, I don't know why you would, but if you wanted to or you needed to dilute it or stretch it, just add a few drops of water and you, you've like unconcentrated, it's like Campbell's soup, you've unconcentrated your chicken broth. Okay, there we go. I'm excited. I get excited over food. I can't help it. <laughs> All right. This is going into my refrigerator because tomorrow it is turning into a big batch of chicken and dumplings. And the next broth, what is the next broth we're gonna do, Levi? I think it is time, I think it's time we tackle how to do beef broth from scratch. So stay tuned to the channel 
because that's coming up. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. And if you thought that video was helpful, do me a huge favor. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell so you get a notification whenever I post a new video. And if you have a second, hop on over to Patreon and check out how to support my channel even more. Again, thanks for watching.